First of all, you guys were able to slow Tobias Harris uh, really to a, a degree we hadn't seen so far this series. Um, how are you able to do it, and who do you think um, would, deserves credit for that? Um, well, I think a combination of a few different things. Um, I think he, he missed some shots that he's made early uh, the first couple of games of the series. But we did, I thought we were a little more physical um, on his catches, on his, on his dribble and his contest. Uh, even when he got to a spot, we still made him, you know, make a tough shot. I thought he had fairly easy looks. We just wanted to make, he's a good player, he can score. But we, I thought we gave him too many opportunities to have uh, easy, easy looks, but I thought we contested all of his, all of the shots at a higher level. But everybody, I mean, Ish Gardenham, Russell Gardenham, Rui Gardenham, Brad Gardenham, we switch a lot. And everybody had a crack. And I thought everybody did it. And then also the guys, he didn't see the lanes like he saw earlier in the series. And um, what's the latest with Davis and his uh, calf injury? Yeah, DB is um, getting the MRI now. I think he should be almost done. Or if not done now, I haven't heard. Um, it's like I said last night. Um, hope for the best with no more shortly. Doesn't look, doesn't look great, but like I said, you hope for the best. Christos? You know, coach, hope you're doing well. Thank you. I'd like to ask you, uh, did, was uh, the last game, the game four was the best uh, game effort-wise about your team? And what did you like most about uh, the way that your, your players fought uh, until the end of the game? Well, I mean, that's, we've had two games this series that we, we played uh, not, our, not our style of basketball. Uh, there were two games we did. One game we won, one game we had a, a chance to make it a one possession game with a minute to go. Um, I like the way we competed. You know, we're down 0-3. There's a lot of times you can look back at the history of playoffs that some teams just, you know what, I don't want to get on a plane. I don't want to get into another hostile environment. I'm just done. Uh, but I knew our guys wouldn't feel that way. We were not happy with our, our home game, our two prior games, but we wanted to bounce back and play our style of play and, and compete and go back to Philly. That was our that was our thing that we talked amongst the group. Let's get back to Philly. And then now we want to get back to DC. We know we have we still have a, a tall order for that to happen, but it gives us a chance the way we played last night. We just got to be able to duplicate that and and hopefully we can make some shots along the way. But I, I love the I love the fight that we have. But we've had that, we've had that for a long time. Mark, Scott, are you are you comforted by the fact that you know your your two guards shot twelve for forty two, and yet you were able to win a game? You know when they weren't at their best shooting wise. Yeah, I mean, that that doesn't happen a lot. I mean, we we we've, we've been some really horrific three-point shooting nights as a, as a team and still managed to, to win with only making six, seven threes. Uh, but if you would have told me our two best players would have a shooting light like that and win, that, that would have been I – I don't know if I would have been on board with that. Um, but it, it did because we, we just we, – we scrapped. We scrapped for one another. Rui had some monster moments and some really big time growth moments. Uh, like I, I just spoke to Russell, you know, 30 minutes ago. How many guys in the history of the game can ha have a three for 19 and have an incredible impact on the game? I, I can't, can't think of one. And I was just joking about him because he's, he's, 
he does so much for the community and documentaries that he just did. I said, you need to do a documentary on that, on you, uh, on an athlete that can go three for 19 and impact the playoff game the way he did. Uh, it just doesn't happen. And then Brad, you know, his ability to make shots down the stretch and free throws, he's doing that at a, at a high level as well. And his passing, he, he gave Howell a nice pass for a three. He's just, he sees things much better. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. Hey, Scotty, what's up? Chris, what's happening? Um, the, the deeper you get into a playoff series, from your experience as a player and coach, obviously, when does it just become, do you just want it more than the next team or the next guy that you're guarding as opposed to, okay, we're going to foul Simmons or we're going to start in uh, Daniel Gaffer? When does it just become, do you just want it more? No, I mean, it's, it's obviously, you have to want it more. I mean, you have to have that burning desire in your gut that don't give up um, on any plays. You just get multiple effort. There's just so many things that go into it. There's always the game within the game, your matchup. Um, I mean, we know how talented this team is. And they're the best team in the East for a reason. But that didn't, that didn't say that we can't win a game or compete against them. I thought, like I said, we did twice. We didn't do so well twice. And now we have a chance in game five to do it again. But we have to have that. It's, I mean, you always have to make adjustments. You have to hope for, you know, some guys have uh, good shooting nights and you, you always hope for an out of nowhere guy. Uh, but you definitely, that's part of it. You have to want it more than the next guy. Zach. Coach, what did you uh, take away from having Gafford start uh, last night after watching the film? And then how does, you know, if Bertans can't go tomorrow, how does that kind of impact down the line what you're, what you're going to do schematically? Well, it definitely has an impact. I mean, DB hit some shots last night, gave us a, a chance not to be down, you know, 10 or 12 points in the first quarter. So we got to be able to, you know, find – find some shooting, uh, but we attacked the basket last night. We got to the free throw last night. That's what we do. We got dynamic guards that can get to the line with their ability to score around the rim and draw contact and finish around the rim. We got to be able to do that again. But Gaff, Gaff's last night to start, I don't know if that played any role in, in the win, but you know, I knew there was a chance that he would pick up two fouls. And, and B's, uh, he's tricky. He's crafty, he's veteran, he's skilled. I mean, he can, he knows where, he knows what he's doing out there. And, but I also helped that we threw Rolo in there and he, he kind of managed the, those minutes in the rest of that half. So that gave Gaff, you know, even some more energy and, and much more, you know, fresh, fresh legs going into the, in that second half, and there was times like I've noticed, you know, when you play them for longer stretches, those last two minutes, you've really got to keep an eye on them. But I thought he was fine throughout the game. Maybe it was because he only played a few minutes in that first quarter. Neil. Hey, Scott. Um, similar to earlier in the season when you guys would get down early in first quarters, it seems like that's trickled in a little bit into this series. Have you seen any common themes um, for why that might be? Well, we haven't, we haven't, you know, we haven't got enough stops, one, I and mean, we haven't made enough shots. It's just really as simple as that. It's not, it's not the, the wrong guys are shooting. It's, um, you know, they, they were, they were a hot team from the perimeter. It's not like we were just not contesting them. There were some that we weren't. Um, had good rotations, but there's a lot of them that hand was there. We were ready, body to body, second jumper. They were making shots. Um, I thought last night we came out and made some shots and we attacked. And even though we got down a few points, we didn't, we didn't take bad shots. You know, I thought there's times we've done that quick. We want to play fast, but we don't want to 
we want to we want to take good shots and play fast, not uh, wild shots with um, the pace. But it, it it helps us with the playing fast. There's no question, and it's a much better feeling when you're going into the second quarter, and you don't have to have that battle up right? every possession. We got to score here. We got to get a stop here, and you want that feeling. But it's a lot easier on the on the on the on the mind when you when it's the game is right within reach, a possession or two away. Matt Paris. Hey, Scott, how do you see the Sixers change without Embiid, you know, just in games where he's not fully uh, available? I mean, oh, why are they still a dangerous team, basically, even if they don't have Embiid? I mean, uh, he's still we're, – we're treating it as he's playing tomorrow. I know he's missed, missed the last night's uh, big chunk of the game and read that he's getting an MRI today, but we're still treating it as he's playing. The playoffs got a chance to play, play, depending on obviously case by case. Um, they've won games without them. They're, they're, this team is deep. This team is loaded. They got a lot of veteran guys, savvy guys. And Dwight Howard started in playoffs, started in many years. He's the, played in the finals. Mike Scott, we've had him. I know how good and he can impact games. Um, but like I said, we're treating it as everybody's healthy and being preparing for all. And if we have to make adjustments, we will. Our guys did that in the second half. Sometimes you have a letdown when their best player uh, gets hurt. But I don't think our guys had a letdown at all. We came after it um, in that second half with that toughness, that fight that we didn't want to. We didn't want the season to end. Thanks. Chase. Um, Scott, after game three, Daniel Gafford ran through kind of a list of adjustments he wanted to make against Joel Embiid, including not biting on his pump fakes. And I, I know Embiid wasn't out there long, but it seemed like Gaff didn't leave his, his feet on, on one pump fake. Just what have you noticed about the adjustments and uh, his ability to kind of make them and, and learn um, as he goes at just 22 years old? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. And but I, I tell them, I tell all of our guys, I know I get that they're young and they don't have the experience. I, 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 I get all that. I'm not oblivious to that, but I don't coach age. I coach NBA players. And we have a level of uh, professionalism and, and conduct how we want to run the program. And, and, and he's a big part of that. And I love his professionalism. Um, I love his, uh, his, uh, appetite to want to get better. He's a great listener. Um, can't get many words out of him, but he, he's listening. Uh, but his, he knows you have to study, get, you have to study the game. Not only do you have to study the players that you guard, but you have to study the game, how, how the game is played, how you can, how you can impact a pick and roll coverage, how you can uh, impact how they go under on Russell your angle of your screens. There's so many things that go on, but when you when you teach, when you coach a young players, you can't give them you can't give them geometry right away. You got to go step by step and 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 give them enough that he's going to have some comfort level before you move on. And and with with Russell and his relationship, and you can see it. He's telling them, "Hey, when I'm driving to the left and and." So why does guarding this way? He's going to come and try to block my shot. You got to come this way so you, I can get a better passing angle. Just things like that. It takes time, and and also the pace that we play. He's a he's a he's a big guy and he's an athletic guy, but we play a fast pace, and that's why sometimes the con when I say conditioning, it's not like he's out of shape, but the stamina to also play at that pace. And also to be able to think the game at that pace, I think it's improving as he's playing more consistent minutes because he hasn't played consistent minutes in in his first couple of years. And but he's getting it now, and he has a chance to to start in playoff games and excel in playoff games. It's uh, huge for his confidence and his growth. I mean, we all have a a, a learning. Uh, 
chart and I think his his chart is like every day it's getting better I I couldn't ask for a, a, a guy that wants to be coached as well as him last question to Zach Hey, Coach, um, Robin mentioned post-game yesterday that when Rui plays better on defense, he also plays better on offense. And Rui's mentioned this, too. And obviously, when Rui's scoring in transition, those two are directly related. But why do you think that is in general? Well, that's a great observation by uh, Rob. And I, hopefully, he takes that advice and himself, right? Make sure you tell him that. He, he always wants to give out, out, out advice, especially with me. I'm tired of it. He needs to just play and not try to coach. But anyways, um, hopefully you guys understand I was joking. But yeah, I think um, it does. I mean, you, you certain players, certain players can just do certain things. It's just the game is like that. If everybody could do everything, it would it would be, I don't know, but certain guys do certain things. Rui has the chance to do a bunch of different things on defense. We don't have to worry about, no, you have to stay at home on this guy. You have to guard this type of player. You can only guard smaller forwards. You can guard slow moving guys. You only can guard catch and shoot guys, but I think he can guard multiple style of players and it helps. It not only helps him, but it helps more importantly, it helps us. But I always think that the more stops that he can help us get, the better chances that he can get out and transition and use some of his, his speed and athleticism. But when he has his best games, if you can, I mean, the scoring is obviously in the, the rebounds last night, but it's the defense that he impacts the game that helps us uh, have success. Coach Brooks just told us, you know, some interesting stuff about how you're you're working pretty closely with Russell Westbrook on you know, passing angles and little things you can do to to help him and help you. Um, what has that been process been like for you? Um, I mean, it's been a real good process. I mean, I've been progressing, you know, ever since I got here, just playing with a guy like Russ, certain things, you know, trying to figure out the spots that he needs me in. Um, and any given situation, you know, just throwing lobs or giving me a pass where I can get a touch shot up or just even just running the floor and getting certain angles to where I can finish in transition. Those are the main things. So it, we're progressing pretty well with that. Um, you know, we've been, we're building a lot of chemistry for sure. You know, I, it's even the same with Brad too, you know, just with those certain things. Cause you really just getting Brad off the ball screen, certain things like that when it comes to him being trapped and stuff, it's really good to be able to get him in his flow, to be able to help the team get in that flow as well. Olivia. Oh, sorry, Alex. Hey, Daniel, um, you know, you guys were talking about turning the tides of the series coming to Washington, weren't able to exactly get it done in game three, but, you know, just how, how huge is it getting this game four win, going back to Philadelphia? I know Coach said, you know, now the target's going back to Washington again, but just where are you guys at, you know, as a group in terms of continuing to build on that momentum in this next game? Really just taking it one game at a time. You know, not really getting too hyped in the fact that, you know, we got the dub. We got the dub last night. We worked hard for that win, um, for sure. Um, but, yeah, just at this point, just really taking it one game at a time and just focusing on the task at hand, and that's just to get wins in this series, to be able to come back to Washington and just really just focus on, you know, progressing further in this series. Sorry, I had a quick follow-up. It wasn't the unmute button wasn't clicking. Um, uh, you know, uh, I know this is your first ever playoff series. Um, how, how much do you feel like you've grown in, in the past four games? How, how much, how vital do you think this experience is, you know, for your career going forward? Um, I mean, it's helping me a lot. You know, it's keeping me motivated because you know, the things that I'm doing on the floor now, I can do a whole lot better for sure. You know, um, just really just getting myself into the position to where I can become more of a target for this team. Really, it's just the biggest thing for me because, you know, my number is going to be called on sooner or later on down the line, um, on down the road. I mean, I started last night, but you never know what the situation is going to be next game. So I just say I just stay prepared for anything, really. And just with this experience, being able to be in different positions like Gordon Joel and Bede, I'm still, you know, learning um, when it comes to situations like that. Um, you know, Gordon one through five, too. You know, we switched a lot last night. 
Um, most of the time, I, you know, contain guys. You know, I alter shots, but other times I got scored on and stuff. So I'm just – it's just a real big learning process for me. You know, it's helping me extend my range of being able to, you know, guard one through five and being able to guard all-stars, you know, guard MVP caliber players. So I'm, I just got to come out and just keep a level head and just, you know, use this as a learning process, you know, for the future, for sure. Thanks. Olivia? Hey, Daniel, um, not just your game, but I guess everyone's as a whole. What do you want to mimic from last night's win uh, to bring it to tomorrow's game five in Philly? Really just the fight and intensity that we had on the floor, you know, um, just really just coming out and having that same mindset. Like I said, it's one game at a time. We're going back to Philly. The target is to, you know, come back to Washington. But really just, yeah, just taking it one step at a time, coming out and playing with the same intensity and the same tenacious, like, mindset that we had last night, for sure. But, you know, it was a lot of guys that were saying, you know, I don't, I don't want to stay home. We want to go back to Philly, and then we want to come back home, for sure. So those are the type of things that we have to really just stay consistent with if we want to be good, if we want to progress in this series. Christos? Hello, Daniel. Hope you're doing well. What kind of a boost do you get from that win and that effort that you made uh, last night? And what would you like to maintain in Game 5 in Philly? Um, it gives us a good boost. I mean, it gives us the, uh, you know, the um, confidence and stuff going into the next game, for sure. Because, you know, we, all we needed was one um, to give us, you know, a bit of hope to go into this next game and to be able to just go in with the same mindset that we had the last game. Go in and just play, just play our tails off, for sure. You know, um... What was the other part of the question? And what would you like to maintain from the game five and four to game five? Oh, yeah, like I, oh, like I had told Olivia, just really just maintain that mindset that we had coming out last night. You know, being intense, having the sense of urgency that we played with last night because you know that that by far you know that was one of our hard fought games for sure. You know, we fought all the way to the end. It was a lot of things that really didn't go our way. You know, it was a lot of referee calls that didn't go our way. It was a lot of turnovers that didn't go our way. But we just have to control what we can control. Once we learn how to control what we can control, it's going to be a good game for us. Not letting ourselves get frustrated and just being there for each other. Being there together as a team. And just locking in to the goal that's at hand and just get wins. Neil? Hey, Daniel. Um... First off, do you feel like anything changes for you when you're in a starting role versus coming off of the bench? And second, obviously, you know, I'm sure you didn't want to get into the foul trouble that you did early yesterday. Is there anything that you might take and apply to game five to maybe not be in that situation, hopefully? Well, with the fouls, I just have to stop being stupid at times. You know, sometimes I got to let stuff go. That'll keep me in the game and that'll keep me locked in to where I can, you know, be able to help and withstand the stint that I'm in starting off. And just with the starting position, I, I don't want to take this, you know, opportunity for granted. Um, I'm in this position because the coaches, you know, they put a lot of trust in me to put me out there first. So the really thing that I really just had to change was like my mindset on coming out. Because usually I was having the mindset of coming off the bench, bringing energy off the bench, but now I got to bring energy straight out the gate. And so that's just my, that's just my thing. I have to stay locked in, you know, through and through. Um, from the first minute, from the first minute of the game to the last minute of the game, just have to stay locked in. And with the fouls, I mean, fouls are going to happen. It's something you can't control. Sometimes you can't control them. The two fouls that I got early, I could have controlled for sure. But, um, I mean, it just happened. You know, there was a lot of frustration with that, but I got a lot of guys on the bench and the sidelines and stuff that really kept me in the game. I really appreciate them. You know, good teammates always that really just come, come over and give you, like, motivational words that keep you in the game. It's really helpful, especially when, when, in a playoff game, you know. Does anything that any teammate yesterday stand out to you that, you know, really resonated with you? No, I really just – guys were telling me to stay locked in. You know, shit happens. So, you got to play through it. Adversity sets in. You know, it shows a lot of character if you get over adversity. So, that's what I had to do. Thanks, Daniel. Chase. Daniel, um, obviously – you're in the starting lineup. You got a huge uh, applause from the fans. Might have been the biggest of any of the starters. And you can just kind of tell on social media and at the games that you, you become a fan favorite very, very quickly. Um, what has the reception been like uh, for you from, from D.C. fans? I mean, I love it. You know, just like you know, just like when I was in Chicago and stuff. And um, when I had got my chances there and I did good there, the fans just like, you know, 
kind of like just gave me all, you know, type, all kinds of love and certain things like that. I mean, I love it. It's, it's a lot of motivation for me to be better because, you know, they love me. And just to come out and be able to do the things that I do on the floor and have them out there supporting and screaming and certain things like that, it's, it's a lot of fun for sure. You know, I get a lot of stuff on Twitter and certain things like that um, about guys telling me like certain things like I'm, I'm good at what I do. I'm a shot blocker. I, I'm the landlord, the renters do, all that stuff. It's a lot of things that they say that kind of like, you know, keeps me uplifted, keeps me motivated for sure because I got, you know, this huge fan base behind me with the Wizards and then just me coming here and, then, you know, everybody welcoming me here. It, it's, it's just a good thing for me. I like it a lot. I'd like to ask you, What would you like to maintain from game four to game five? And do you believe that this win can change the whole series for your team? Me, um, it definitely changes the momentum of the series. You know, um, I've been in playoffs before that you feel pretty bad after losing a couple games uh, and then you win one game and the whole spirit changes. So I think it was, it was good for us. Um, but it's not enough, you know, that we, we have to win three more games, um, but we're going to take one by one and, uh, and try to try to do our best. Um, uh, like we did yesterday, you know, the mentality and, the, uh, the way we, we fight and, um, the focus, I think you gotta be there, uh, every, every single game now. Alex. Hey, Roll, um, you know, you guys kind of kept the season alive with that win, but, you know, no NBA team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit. Uh, what do you think you guys have in you that maybe you guys would be able to make history and be the first team to do that? Uh, honestly, we haven't even talked about that uh, on our team. You know, we're just uh, uh, trying, like I say, play game by game. I think if you If you try to win three games in one, uh, uh, you're not gonna be successful in that game. Uh, you gotta be patient. You gotta uh, stay focused, stay ready, and, and uh, you know win every possession, win every uh, single minute in that game, and then bring the series back to the sea. And then we think about game uh, game um, five, right, or game six. So um, we. I don't, I don't like to say we have this or we have that to, uh, to be the team to come back from a 3-0 situation. But um, like I said, we're just going to take the uh, game by game. Thank you. Yeah. Chase. Hey, Howell. Um, when you're in the second unit, what, what do you think is important to your role uh, when you're playing with those guys as opposed to the, the first unit and the starters? Um, I think uh, I always say that I try to play the game um, the right way. And, uh, of course, it changes a little bit. You know, I think I have, I have to be more aggressive. I have to uh, try to score or I have to uh, do more than uh, when I'm playing with the first unit when um, – Brad and, and Russ are most of the time making plays and like uh, 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 getting everybody involved. You know, I'm, I'm more as a, a spot up shooter and play hard defense. And on the second unit, um, I gotta maybe run a couple pick and rolls and maybe create for others. And uh, I think that's the only thing it changes. But my mentality is it, it stays the same. You know, I, I try to go out there, out there, um, shoot the ball when they they let me shoot or penetrate or, you know, do things that the game give it to you. Um, but definitely change a little bit uh, when I'm on the second unit. And um, that was uh, your best game of the series so far individually, uh, just at least from a scoring perspective and shooting wise. Um, what do you think led to you having a little more success in game four? Um, you know, I haven't shot the ball well uh, this series until uh, yesterday, you know, um, A lot of my shots has been in and out, in and out. Um, I've been taking good decisions, taking good shots, shots that the team want me to take, coach wants me to take. So um, I think it was just staying aggressive and staying confident. You know, it's hard when you have a couple games that things don't go your way. Um, I missed a lot of shots in game three. Um, but, you know, basketball, it's, it's different every night. 
and uh, I got to stay aggressive. I got to stay confident and, and keep shooting the, the uh, shots that the team and coach wants me to, to take it. Neil? Hey, Ahol. Obviously, you know, the Sixers have a lot of size and at various points in time when you guys are in your small ball, small ball lineup, you have to, you know, defend a bigger, more physical guy. What are you trying to accomplish, you know, when you have that difficult task? Um, I think it's just trying to make them uh, work for their shot, not give anything easy. Foul if I have to foul um, some of their guys. But uh, I think it's just being tough. You know, I don't think that defensively that has been a, a, an issue for me or for our team, um, not only in this series, but this whole season. You know, we've got guys that are uh, maybe smaller, but they are, they're tough, you know, and they play defense. And, of course, they're going to score on us uh, sometimes. But, um, but I don't think that has been an issue for us. And, um, but like I say, we just got to – Try to make them hard uh, work hard for the for the shot. Uh, take a contested two and take a shot over us.